I'm Arn13. Welcome to our show, World Tiger. Building Dragon. Today we are starting off with some of the World Anvil prompts through their summer camp program. We plan to be back here as and do as many of them as we can. There will be 33 in total. All throughout the month of July. You can win prizes for some of your submissions. So if you're a world builder of any kind, beginner, intermediate, or advanced, consider signing up for World Anvil. It's totally free, or you can use their paid subscriptions, which is totally worth it. Link will be in the description below. Not bad for a non-sponsored video. We will get there. What is the prompt? Write about a myth or legend relating to a famous long lost item. What are they going to be using? The Atrium. And then you? I'm going to use Elecrid. We're giving ourselves some parameters in order to complete this task. Each of us has 30 minutes to answer the prompt. The submissions have to be at minimum 300 words. So at the end of the 30 minutes, we are going to come back together and share what we came up with. Sometimes the best ideas do come from collaboration. All right. Let's get this done. Time to skip! What do you want? <laughs> Okay, so we are back. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes have passed. Three minutes and some change. Mm -hmm. It's fine. <laughs> um, we have, I don't believe, full articles, but we have stuff. We have 300 words. We, have de we definitely have 300 <laughs> words. <laughs> we definitely have 300 words. Um, so this is us addressing the first prompt in order, because that's what you decided. Um, tell a myth mm -hmm. about a specific lost artifact in your world. Right, and legendary lost artifact. Legendary lost artifact in your world. Something of the like. Right. So... But we're writing about a myth about the item. Yes. So... Oh, then I probably didn't do all that great on mine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> Uh, well, no, okay, I, I guess I kind of got a little bit of mythy here, um, but you, go ahead, you okay. go ahead and go first. Okay, so, um, for my world, um, Theatrum, I have kind of easily split it up into two separate ages, the old age and then the current age, which doesn't really have a name yet, but we're getting there. The new age? The new age. That's, um, that's basic? That's, that's generic? Just too okay. basic. Cool. Yeah, old age isn't basic enough, but, um... So I wrote, anyway. mm, I wrote mine all about, um, I have a, I have these two dragon lords from the old age, um, one called Kidal and then one called, uh, Fruvnus. One is traditionally more of a, like, metallic dragon, and then you've got the chromatic dragons. Um, with that, um, in the old age, they were constantly bickering over lands and titles, and so, um, in order to kind of settle these disputes, they went and looked at Theatrum to see kind of like how they could best solve this problem. Um, and when they looked on Theatrum, they saw that the, um, the god of light, Sol, and then the, um, her epithet is a uh, daughter of chaos, uh, Kaifen, they were fighting, um, because they both kind of have similar... Domains. Soul and Kaifen were fighting? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 um, Because they both have similar domains of, like, war and fighting, verse, but Soul is more, like, the good victory, and Kaifen is more just the war domain. Um, and so, uh, Kidal, who is, again, our metallic dragon, um, gave Soul a sword crafted from one of his fangs, and then Fruvnas gave Kaifen um, a dagger that was crafted from one of his claws. And so, yeah. So, the, the dragon lords kind of decided, like, we're gonna pit these two people, these two gods together, and whoever wins, that's the one that will decide who's the best dragon lord and gets to win the title of King of the Skies or something like that. Um, and so... Um, but before they actually fought, uh, Fruvnas instructed Kaifen to um, dip her blade into um, some of his poison breath. So, kind of fighting, kind of cheating there, but eh. Um, it's dirty fighting. Dirty fighting. Dirty fighting. It's still fighting, but it's dirty fighting. Um, so, these two gods fought up against each other. 
um, at dawn they were meeting on these great fields. Um, they fought from sunup to sundown for eight straight days, got a massive following of people, of gods and mortals and any other creatures that were watching this great battle between the two. And it only ended when Kai Fen um, actually ended up piercing Soul with one of her poison blades. So effectively, she is the winner. But when the crowds went to go, um, you know, celebrate in her victory, embrace her as this new goddess, as this new war goddess, they kind of saw that she had the poison blade. So this new conflict broke out of, okay, is she really the winner? Or is the person who fought with dignity the whole time the true winner? So even more conflict was born versus a resolution. Um, but Kidal, the good, good dragon he is, decided that um, he would end his feud with Fruvnas and kind of went to him and said, you know what, you won. Your champion won the battle, so you win. Um, and so it's kind of a myth of, um, you know, be more like Kidal. When you lose, lose gracefully. Don't keep fighting. And then those two blades eventually will come back into my world um, at some point some grand things. So but... it's the it's the tooth of Kidal and the talent of Fruvnus? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any like part that really stood out to you that you really enjoyed like coming um, up with? I really like um just continuously Something that I liked is that this tale would definitely be told more um more verbally. It wouldn't necessarily be written down because it was from the old age. It would be a very, very old story. One that I could almost see like Grandma Dragonborn like telling to her like grandkids like now you have to be more like Kidal. Or lose gracefully. Don't keep bickering and fighting because it'll only cause more chaos. Um, and you don't want to be like that. You want to be like Kidal. And so, I don't know. I just like adding in the different layers um and just how that story would be told in the current age versus what actually happened in the old age is there a difference of how that would be told um no but i think that this this is more of a tale of like what i wrote is more a tale of like epic battles and who's going to win versus you know basically what it boils down to in the new yeah. age is more yeah, be yeah. being more uh it sounds proverb-like in a way, yeah. kind of like yeah, prodigal yeah, yeah, son-like, yeah, like, you know, um, don't be greedy. It's like, it, is, is proverb the correct way to go, or is that like fable? Isa, that, yeah, fable. fable. That was yeah, it would be more of a fable. Word. They would teach yeah. you a lesson. Okay. Cool. Um, I like the, I, I, <laughs> I love dragons, if you didn't notice. <laughs> um, I really like the dichotomy between I like I lo I think I, I look I know words mm -hmm. I can articulate I particularly like this take on a sort of in your world Kidal and Fruvnus if I am I saying mm -hmm. that correctly yep. Fruvnus are like revered not necessarily are they revered as like dragon deities or are they just like basically, basically? Yeah. cool so i love this take on the dichotomy between metallic and chromatic dragons in your standard like D, &D sort of setting mm -hmm. because usually what we have to deal with is tiamat v bahamut which is yeah. like standard and obviously there's a lot to, that goes into tiamat but those two are kind of the ones when it comes to dragon kind that are always bickering with mm -hmm. each other and always providing all that conflict so i like this take on it whether or not that was an intentional choice on it, your part it was a little intentional <laughs> i cuz one of the things that i'm not as i'm struggling with in in a number of ways but also trying to um, build upon is uh, your pantheon of gods makes very few to zero references to any like established pantheons in D&D &D, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy uh for the love of god I yeah I really enjoy that mm -hmm. um and I like the I like that take I like that spin and still justifying the difference and the um the tension between these two cultural groups mm -hmm. I think is really cool was there any other part of this that really stood out to you that you really enjoyed? Like any of the like additional prompts that they threw down here? No, I kind of just wanted to, I still new to World Anvil, so I'm getting there, but I, I put everything up in the vignette, not really even 
scrolling down and they've got cool things like summary and historical basis and spread like how widespread is this tale so I'm definitely gonna go back into that once um, I can get some more writing done and just fill that out a little bit more because I thought that was really cool um, do you have any th initial thoughts about cultural like, those reception? Bits? Well, I'm looking at it now, The they have a section called Cultural Reception. I think that's really cool because depending on um, which god you follow or who you kind of associate with, the the story can kind of be taken in a different way. Like, mm -hmm. yes, Kaifen won. She was the true winner. And how dare people try and take her victory away? It could have been for any number of reasons. Or as Sol, like, or, the followers of Soul see that as, like... like Kai Fen dirty is a cheater, dirty like cheater. why did she do that? Mm -hmm. You know, he deserved to win, that sort of thing. So, um, I guess it just I, I'm gonna have to go through here and go no. through all that fun stuff. But I mean, I did. I, I like. I just wanted to <laughs> probe that, right? Right. Because right. I, I, I saw that you put so much into the <laughs> into the vignette. I didn't scroll down. But, I, uh... Look, I'm I'm still trying to figure out World Anvil myself. Um, having a lot of fun with it, mm -hmm. but sometimes. The only complaint that I've ever heard about World Anvil is, I get, I feel, uh, quoting someone, is like, I feel overwhelmed by the amount of questions that they're asking me. The right. The dietary habits of dwarves is always <laughs> the one that I go back to, and it's just like, okay. Bread and meat. Just don't. And ale. Just don't use that <laughs> part. Just, like, skip that bit. You don't it doesn't need pop up. If you don't put anything in there, it doesn't pop up on your page, yeah. so it's just empty. Yeah, it's just empty. It doesn't exist, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Again, I love World Anvil, and I think that I would like to see where else, maybe at the end of this, all of this, we can get, like, pick out, like, three or four of our, like, favorite articles Ooh, that yeah. we've gone back to and they... be like, yeah, so I really, I developed this after we talked about it, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, took it this spin. Yeah. Up to you. All right. Me? What'd you get? So, um, I'm going to preface this with, I may have, I think I really talked more about the lore rather than the actual item itself, the artifact itself, but I just, I don't think that I went as fable-like or really detailing out the whole myth. Mm. It was kind of like a sl little snippets and series of like destiny fate lore bits mm -hmm. or whatever so the the piece that i went with was the blade of ten crowns um which in elacrid there is a um a land mass known as the crane basin which is uh home to more of the oriental uh asian cultures um kind of a blend between korean and japanese and a little bit of uh, chinese thrown in there that's kind of where that's what's happening in the Crane Basin. Um, <laughs> the Crane Basin is divided into uh, great clans, great tribes. Um, they're referred to as the Great Yokai Tribes. So like your Kitsune, your Nekomatas, your all of those um, Asian-inspired spirits have their own tribe. Uh, and for the Blade of Ten Crowns, it is being it is in reference to what is referred to as the Mortal Kingdom. It is the tribe of humans that mm. live in the Crane Basin. And the Blade of Ten Crowns is this legendary weapon that was bestowed upon them by a fey goddess, Vivian, um, who is a goddess of spring, rebirth, and new beginnings. Uh, and the idea was that this blade would be passed down throughout the generations of the mortal kingdoms of the mm -hmm. mortal kings to basically it would <clears throat> as it was passed down it would t carry with it the knowledge and the wisdom of its former kings oh. so that the younger generations would learn from their mistakes mm -hmm. and their glories in, in order to in order to be better right um to better themselves and push their kingdom push the the humans the mortal kingdoms to a greater uh, place so, kind of where I went in depth a little bit more was uh, a little bit of the summary, but that's kind of essentially what I just gave you, <laughs> is, is the, the basic gist of it. Um, it is, the blade is lost uh, to the community, the blade is lost. Um, the myth goes that it has been lost and that one day a young king will return to uh, wrest it from its plinth and... Uh, 
King Arthur their way to victories, yep. essentially. Uh, uh, I didn't realize that I was drawing inspiration from King Arthur when I wrote this, <laughs> but when I wrote, rest it from its plinth, I was like, oh, oh. King Arthur. Uh, cool. Um, which is fine. I really don't have a problem with that. I like that. Um, kind of putting it in this more... A setting that it's not yeah, normally put in. normally put in. I, I like that a lot. Um, some of the myths that go around it being lost is that in the Blue River, which is a river in the Crane Basin, one of the largest, uh, it is the largest river in the Crane Basin, um, the spirit that lives in that river uh, took it out to sea. Mm. Uh, one day, the whoever was carrying the, the Blade of Ten Crowns was killed in the river or like lost it in a bed like there are so many different variations of how the blade was lost mm -hmm. um to the river um but all of them basically end with the spirit took it and then took it out to sea because she wanted to screw over the mortal kingdom mm -hmm. um another another uh myth as to why it or to what it was lost is not necessarily to the river spirit but in the crane basin there are four celestial beasts mm. kind of drawing on that uh asian the uh the asian theme uh there's like the celestial dragon the celestial tiger uh the turtle and i am forgetting the fourth one the phoenix the phoenix <laughs> um so those all exist within the crane basin mm -hmm. they are in essence godlike figures godlike beings and so a lot of people so a, lo a number of people believe that the blade of ten crowns has been taken by the celestial dragon the celestial worm mm. that lives in the crane basin and it is amongst his horde and he will bestow it upon the young king should he make the journey to to get the sword mm -hmm. um and if the great worm thinks that he is worthy right um i think one of my favorite things that i wrote about this is in uh at the very bottom of the of the list they have in art with basically how is it depicted in art or it was somewhere in there. Oh, that's cool. And Tapestry, I had... songs, or statues, that's cool. Right. So I thought that was really cool, and I, I got to thinking because I had this image that came into my head while I was writing it, uh, or while I was writing this, because outside of the Crane Basin, nobody really knows or cares about the Blade mm -hmm. of Ten Crowns. It's important to the Mortal Kingdom, not to really anybody else. Right. I mean, the Great Clans also know about it, know the legend, but... Again, they don't... Not really, my clan. Not my clan, not my problem. Mm -hmm. um, and the Crane Basin is very much like an isolationist sort of country. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one group that really goes in and out of the Crane Basin, and that's a... Assassin's Guild of Batmans, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I really liked about in art is that uh, the allusion to... Um, one of these, one of these, uh, a member of this group who has like gone out and got stopped and was like drunk or was asked to tell a story from his homeland or whatever, and he told the story about the blade of ten crowns. And so this, um, just outside of uh, the Crane Basin, is this place called the Cape of Ross, and it is home to. I'm getting a lot of detail here. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it is home to a um, formerly enslaved peoples. It is a liberated country that was taken from northern countries, but we're not going to get into those details. Um, but they're very much kind of a um, old age uh, Holy Land style kingdom. Mm -hmm. So their artwork is very um, reverent in that respect. Um, but also it is very, um, they use a lot of clay and mud and oil painting. Got so it. it's that deep, those deep textures mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So in art, um, within the Crane Basin, uh, the Blade of Ten Crowns is depicted as your very traditional sword, like single edged sword within the Crane Basin, mm -hmm. a katana. Right. I'm not writing that into the text because that's silly as hell, right. but, uh, it's a katana. Um, but this piece, there is a single piece called the Young King outside of the Crane Basin that depicts the Blade of Ten Crowns, and it is this individual um, clad in very ornate but war-torn garb. Uh, his face is more or less obscured by just, like, mm -hmm. whatever, just the way that it was painted, but he is holding aloft this uh, double-edged, the 
more traditional English Western double-edged sword mm -hmm. with a cross guard, and hanging from the cross guard are these ten crowns. That's cool. Um, that kind of come down as he's like holding it up, right? You know, triumphantly or whatever. Um, and I really like the image that is in my head of that. I mm -hmm. don't know if I have the capabilities of actually putting that to paper. <laughs> we'll see. Um, well, they do. I think they have an option where you can add artwork, like yeah, actual I, artwork if you were... Sure, sure, sure. So that, what that means to me is that I need to go home and prep a... I, I can't paint it. I will not be able <laughs> to paint it. I am terrible at painting, but I probably can pull it off with charcoal. I might be able to pull it off with charcoal. I don't know. <laughs> I think what I like about yours is that you can, you went into a lot of detail, not just with, yeah, you had the myths here and there, but you went into a lot of detail with like, how far spread is this? And it's effects and it's reach more so than just like, cause I just kind of laid out the facts of like, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to go back through and edit like, how was this received by the people and what do they think about it now versus you started with this is what people think about it now and how far it's gone um, and how it's affected people. I don't know. I like that. I like the I like the approach that you had where it, it really brought me back to like in sixth grade when everyone else was reading because of when Dixie I was reading the Iliad. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> I'm reading the text of like what actually happened. Right. And like because you know my buddy who's sitting next to me can tell me what he thinks happened during the Trojan War because it was right. told to him or he like watched the movie Troy right. or whatever and I'm sitting here going well, well actually, actually. <laughs> and it's I, I really like that I really like that approach and it's funny that I didn't realize until we sat down that you're like yeah we were writing the actual myth and I was like oh I didn't write a myth <laughs> <laughs> well you wrote about the item and then you can write the myth about it we can add to it right right so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's the first prompt. It's the first prompt. It's we'll, the first prompt. Got more. I'll get better. But I like I, again. I think I think it's very funny that like you wrote the myth and then I wrote everything around right. the myth. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what well, happens. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, um I mean, no, that's that's all I had written today. That's that's all I got. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting all those buttons that everyone else bugs you about. And check out World Anvil if you're interested. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. I'm Kat. I'm R13 and I'm still waiting on that ramen. We'll see you again here soon. Bye! Bye.